Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to talk about a vehicle that we have at the museum. It's called the Taurus. It's actually based on the Leopard 1. And this vehicle is used to actually uh, by the mechanic to change engines and uh, to do the maintenance on uh, Leopard tanks. So here at the front of the vehicle, you see those uh, three periscopes. This is where your driver sets. And besides, you have the tube that actually uh, is for the machine gun. So normally you have the driver, and if you use the machine guns, you have the second guy that operates the machine gun from the uh, episcope on top. At the front of the vehicle, you have that uh, giant dozer blade. This is actually more to stabilize the vehicle when you lift heavy loads. Because with the boom out there, right there, that we're going to see in a, in a couple of minutes from now, you can lift up to 20 tons on, uh, from the ground. So to lift that 20 tons, you need to be able to stabilize the vehicle as much as possible to make it level. Otherwise, the suspension would actually crush down the vehicle and the vehicle would be an angle, which is not good for accuracy. Another use that you can do with the dozer blades is stabilize the vehicle when you use the winch. Just underneath here, you have a little door that gives you access to a winch that can actually uh, tow up to 30 tons. With the pulley system, you can easily double that. So you'll be able to drag a vehicle of 40 or 50 tons out of the mud easily. That's why when you use the winch, you lower the, you lower the blade actually to help anchor the vehicle. As you can see on the side, this is pretty much standard Leopard 1 suspension and running gear. So you have your two tracks, each weight about 2.3 tons. that's being driven by the sprocket at the back and you have seven road wheels plus the tensioner. Uh, each road wheels have a, is equipped with the torsion bar and on the first three and the last two, we have shock absorbers. So the travel of the suspension allows you the vehicle to move uh, easily on the rough ground and to actually uh, use to tension this track, uh, you do that mechanically with a big uh, wrench uh, with two or three guys at the front on the idler. Here at the front, we have the tensioning system, which consists of the idler and the tensioning unit. The idler used to be on the early leopards, the same size, the, the road wheels of the idler used to be the same size as all the normal road wheels. But uh, and back in the 1990s, they decided to go to a smaller version here. So it gives you a more uh, distance from the ground and allows you to uh, negotiate actually higher obstacles. To actually tension this uh, track that you need to do actually, you have two uh, big wrench. One is to unlock that giant screw here. And the other one is to actually give the tension to the track. And if you happen to break a track like this, you need to actually release the tension on the track and then deal with each track links that are being either damaged or need replacement. The main component of the ARV is the boom itself. As you can see, there's a scale around here. This scale actually tells you at certain angle what is the normal load in tons and what is the maximum load in tons. So if you look at almost vertical plane, you can go up easily to 20 tons. This is very useful to actually change a power pack from the Leopard tanks or even change a turret. If we take the power pack of a Leopard tank, we're talking about 4.5 tons and this can easily lift it. So for the maintainers, normally at the back of the tank, sitting at the, uh, the top of the back deck, you have a spare engine. And the procedure is that if your Leopard crew has an engine problem, whichever it is, they call the wrecker. And in the meantime, while the wrecker is coming to their location, the crew dismantle the back deck, unscrew the back deck. And then the maintainer comes, use the boom to remove the back deck and replace the engine with a new one. And off you go. With a good crew, in both of the ARV and on the Leopard, you can do that pretty much in half an hour. Here at the back of the vehicle, you have the giant hook to lift all the weights with the boom. Normally the chain is, does not hang there, but uh, that's what's been used recently. That's uh, why, why it's still there. 
And at the back also you have an hydraulic arm that is actually attached and plugged here that you can operate. This is designed if you have a, a heavy weight like a turret, a tank turret, and you lift it because since a tank turret is pretty roomy and it's pretty big, you have to park the two vehicles side by side and then the boom is going to be able to lift the tank turret from the side of the vehicle. Also at the back you have what's called an A-frame. An A-frame is actually a scissor type uh, tow bar that has the, a large hook and two attachment point. And what you do is actually you can tow a tank with that easily. And the reason why you have two is that you can actually hook two tanks to the ARV and on the flat surface uh, actually tow two tanks with the ARV. The way it works is that you attach this part to this at the back of the ARV and those uh, fixtures to the tank itself. A couple of things that we always see on the German tank is that white cross over there. This is called a convoy cross and it's a white cross. It's actually rubber and in the middle you have a dim light and when you uh, switch that on it actually uh, is bright enough for the next vehicle to see your cross. So it's only for convoy and it's still going on with the German army. You still see that on the Leopard too. And uh, for those who wonder, in that box, you have all your uh, tools for the tracks and for the maintenance of the tanks. Normally, when you open up this box, you have your track kit and you have, you have even a, la a label to tell you how to uh, storage this. And here you have your toolbox. On the Leopard Taurus, you also have your storage bin where you can store all the extra equipment that you need to actually uh, make a weld or work on the engines or boost a vehicle. And all your extra equipment sits here. And for the maintainer, it's very useful because they, pre they can pretty much do all the major maintenance work that has to be done on the tank itself. If you come forward with me at the front, you have the other access door, which is actually gives you a chance to see the interior of the, uh, the fighting compartment, where there's normally three guys. So you have the driver right here at the front, the crew commander sits just behind, and there's a third hatch for a, a third crew member. When the third crew member uh, doesn't sit at the back, he sits right here, at the front, beside the driver operating the machine gun. Okay, inside the driver's hatch, first of all, that thing here is to have to have your hatch pivot and close down this way. Very easy to operate, very quick. What you need in a leopard tank is the key of the tank. <laughs> then. You put that right here, and basically there's two positions, the first one and the second one. The second one gives you all the power you need for most of your electrical equipment. And then, as you can see, you have all the dials that you need, uh, speedometer, tachometer, then uh, fuel, oil temperature, and oil pressure. What you have also is the switch for the headlights, because there's headlights on the tank, and also the NVC system. What you have on most of the Leopard tank is a driving switch, which is like kind of an ignition. When you switch that on, like this, you hear a lot of noise. That noise comes from two things. It comes from the two uh, dust blowers and your fuel pump. Then, if you want to start the tank, you have this uh, L bar. The first position will actually uh, make your uh, glow plug warm up, and then the second position, which we're not going to attend today, will start the tank. On the ARV, with the modern modifications that uh, Krosma 5 Eggman carried on uh, before Afghanistan, you have your main control box for the hydraulic system, which is here. And then on this side, you have, turn around, 
all the operating uh, lever to operate your winch, your uh, dozer blade, or your boom itself. On this side, you have the gear shift from one to four. Then you press that button, you engage either forward, reverse, or pivot, pivot steer. If you look here, what you have is pretty common to all the Leopard, is your two parking brake lever that acts on both tracks, your steering column, and then the locking mechanism. Because on those tanks, with the transmissions that we have, if you disengage this, and even a neutral that you turn this, the tank would tur turn on itself. It will lock one track and transfer the power to the other track. So once you start the tank, before you attempt to move, you need to, this to be secure, because if you touch it, then it turn, the tank turns. As of all leopards, you have the gas pedal, which can also switch off your engine by pulling on it. And you have the big pedal here, which is your brake. And on this side, you have the locking mechanism for the dozer blade. If you happen to have a loss of hydraulic pressure, this prevents the dozer blade to drop while you're driving, which is not that fun. Now, we're lucky because we have one out. This is your uh, Leopard 1 uh, main power pack. Well, actually, the only power pack that you can have, actually, on a Leopard tank. It consists of the engine itself, a 37.4 V10 four-stroke diesel engine made by MTU and producing 830 horsepower at uh, 2,300 RPM. At the front, you have the two supercharged. You have the big flywheel. And what you see at the back is the transmission. And on each side, you have two uh, radiators for the engine. On top, that we don't see right now, there's a big fan that produces 70 kilowatts of power just by turning it on itself. And what is not on the tank itself when it sits in the tank is that uh, bar that actually is used by the RF to remove the power pack uh, once you disconnect all the electrical connections which are all quick disconnects. So all you have to do when you remove the engine is to unscrew the two uh, front mounting bolt that you have to have, uh, you have to access inside the tank. And then underneath, right there, there's uh, underneath the transmissions, there's two other bolts that you unscrew. And right here, this is linked to your uh, final drive and sprockets. So you unscrew this and it attaches both sprockets from the engine. And after that, you can lift the power pack quite easily and replace it quite easily. As I told you before, replacing this with the RF, with the good Leopard crew and the good RF crew, takes you about in between 25 and 30 minutes. That's an easy job and it allows you to do all the maintenance that you do, you do on the tank, on the engine itself, outside the tank. So if you have to change the oil, uh, change the coolant, or uh, fix something on the engine or the transmission, it's, e it's an easy access once it's out of the tank because if it's in the tank, it's another story. Thank you.